One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. Link is in the description. Oh, dude, that's new. It's going to take me a little bit to get used to that one. All right. How was everyone? How was everyone's day today? Dude, today was pretty, pretty freaking not so, right? Today was awesome. Definitely some cool stuff to look at. I need a, yeah. I mean, if you were a short seller, you had to have had a good day. Like, I mean, I, I don't know. If, I don't know how you're a short seller today and, 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 and screwed up unless, you know, like you kind of break some rules, right? You just, you know, you start shorting, you know, like above BWAP up here, that this, any, anything like this kind of stuff, right? This is stuff that you don't short, you know, anything like a reclaim like that. You don't short that no matter what it is, you, you know, chasing lows down here, you're going to lose chasing lows down here. You're going to lose, right? You just consented to me. Oh, well, good. Because if, if we don't have consent, then. Oh, okay. Oh, oh okay. Gotcha. Anyway, but yeah, like, I mean, if, as long as we did everything right, like if you followed all the rules, like you shouldn't have had a bad day as a short seller. Um, you could have easily, if you're a longer, you could have easily broken some rules or gotten caught, gotten trapped, tried to get by this. Or what was the other one? That the other one that kind of oh, it was BB, right? The other one, like if you tried to dip by up here, this I actually tried to short this up here. I was like, oh, I'm gonna short it, but like it was a fleeting fancy, and I just shorted it, and I was like, oh, you know, you don't normally do this. Don't just don't just do that. So I covered it right away because I wasn't prepared for the trade, and it's really. It kind of goes to what we're going to be talking about today, about being ready. Like, I really wasn't ready for this. I shorted this as a short. I really wasn't even ready. And it, was, it was even just a starter, too. I was going to add to it. But I was like, no, what are you doing? Like, you didn't plan for this trade. And I cut it. And I did miss it. But, um, like, I, you know, it was more of just kind of one of those gut instinct trades. And I was right. But, um, I like, I, I didn't fully have a plan. And that, that was just like, dude, what are you doing? Like, cut it. Like you want a short, like I, like, I didn't even look left to the level. I didn't even look left. Uh, like I didn't look like, Hey, what, like should 20 hold? I just saw that 20 kind of rejected and I was going to take one of those. Oh yeah. I'll short risking 20. And just, I just had bad flashbacks. I'm just like every, like you don't just do that. Like without thinking, it's not something that you do unless you have thought about that ahead of time. Like, Oh, if 20 fails, then I'm going to short it because then it's kind of like an if then situation where you, you, you were prepared for the trade. And I really just wasn't. So I kind of caught myself now, whether or not I was going to be right or not, uh, I, I was going to be right, but like could have just as easily ripped back over 20. And then I just take a dumb loss for, for like, you know, like I would have regretted losing that trade more than I would that more than I regretted missing that, especially because I like the long better. So I don't really regret missing short trades very much. I, I regret missing long trades, but but yeah, definitely, um, definitely a solid, um, uh, solid day for, for shorts, um, on, on the first red days across the board. You have to be careful get with, while getting caught, uh, long on, you know, being too early on your dip buys or, um, trying to, trying to chase stuff that that's broken. So that kind of stuff, you would have gotten trouble with longs, but all that stuff is like, all that stuff is pretty rudimentary, right? Like, like I said, like today was a day where if you strictly followed like basic kind of technical analysis process, like, dude, don't chase short under VWAP. Don't try to, don't try to dip by, um, you know, don't try to like a dip by a falling knife, you know, that kind of stuff. It's as long as you avoided that, those kind of uh, trades, you, you did all right. Yeah, the bounces, the bounces were pretty strong. But here's the thing, guys. I mean, you know what's funny is like I, I actually wanted to buy AMC. 
I actually like I I wanted to buy AMC when it was down here in the 40s. I really did. And I thought about it and I was like, dude, it's this isn't this isn't just gonna roll over like this. I know I had a really weak morning. But here's like, I mean, here's a, like everyone seemed to be surprised. I really wasn't. And like the problem is as I got into like like if I you, you know that kind of like, oh, I didn't take the earlier trade, so I'm not going to take this trade mentality. Well, like I, I had really wanted to buy it here and I missed this. So that I didn't buy it at 50. But here's the thing, like, like I normally would have bought something like this here at 50 on AMC. But the problem is, is I had post trade like kind of regret. Like I didn't take the earlier trade, so I didn't want to like if I didn't buy 45, why am I going to buy 50? And it's kind of a fallacy, but like, you know, like we all fall victim to it, to be honest, or we all fall victim to it every once in a while. And, and yet, like, I honestly wasn't surprised with this move. I was just like, dude, like, this is coming back. It's, a, it's, it's totally going to like, like, I don't even think a hundred is out of the cards in the next couple of days. I really don't like, I mean, the thing is, I mean, just compare it to what now here's the thing, like, Compare it to this kind of stuff, like what we saw with GME. And this is, GME is not unique. G GME was unique in the sense to where. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line. And uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. Fucking shit went ape shit, like really high. But this pattern, um, we have seen repeated, repeated, repeated where, I mean, th this looked like a small day. This was huge. This was a huge day. This was an absolutely monster day. Um, and we, then we do this sell off move or i mean if you're looking at this chart this is game over death candle on the daily backside is in your fucking like it's over like this is done and then we got this and it like it wasn't over and 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 then that happens right so like this pattern where whereas the range was extreme the pattern is not extreme where we see these ultra super super momentum stocks um have this awesome awesome red day and if they catch another bid and now you just got all those new trap shorts all over again now here's a, the the difference with G, uh amc this time and gme is that there is an element of people are expecting it which is making amc which is probably going to cut off some of amc's um ultimate whatever whenever the hype finally dies uh, it's probably going to cut off some of its range just because there are going to be short on guard for this kind of thing. Um, and uh, probably a lot more people are long this time. Uh, like I'm like this time, I have no doubt that hedge funds are fucking long the shit out of AMC and like they're, they're helping push it up because I mean, they've seen, they saw what happened. They know like, they're like, Hey, we're in, we're in it for the bigger money this time. Fuck this shorting bullshit. We can, I mean, if this thing's going to go nuts, so we want to be long for something. And so you definitely have probably more of a, you know, more of a long, uh, like a long bias this time. And so that, that probably might ultimately cut some of the range too, as you know, the, the more long heavy you are, the more, you know, competition for sales and shorts are on guard. So it's not going to have that just limit up, 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 up. Oh my God. My, like my hedge fund is at negative 5 million. I need to fucking bail out of my trade. Like, you know, those those margin call forced cover. Like, I don't know if that panic will happen. We'll see. It all depends. Like, I mean, if AMC starts moving tomorrow pre-market or Monday pre-market up into over hundreds, we could see that kind of thing. But the thing is that, you know, you have to get there first, right? And the problem is, is that because it is, you know, people are more ready for this one than they were for GME. I, I don't think it's uh, necessarily going to have that extremity to it. I don't know if this is necessarily over, right? Remember, I mean, this was a big day and, and like we, we, this isn't even as bearish as the GME day that I just showed you guys, right? This is nowhere near as bearish as that. Like this is, this is a bull day, but it even recovered. But he, here's the thing, it recovered because people are afraid, right? Like GME, like 
really snuck up on people. This just the same day it tanks, it recovers, meaning that like people are interested in it. This is why I was kind of mad because I wanted to dip by AMC. Now, I didn't want to see this happen. And I will be getting into this. Um, we'll be getting into uh, kind of this kind of methodology later on in the webinar. But so you're saying it's a chance. Yeah. Um, but I, I actually didn't want to see this happen. Like, I didn't want to see this kind of recovery in the middle of the day like this, just because, like, I mean, a lot of the short that, you know, probably just bailed out here. And I don't want them to bail out here. I want them to bail out, like, kind of in a surprise fashion. And this just kind of, well, during market hours is less of a surprise because people can still get out. So, you know, there's that, there's that, this happened because people are expecting bullshit, right? And so they get bullshit. And so, like, you know, this is kind of, it kind of levels out the playing field, like, or, it, you know, it equalizes. It doesn't allow for such extremity of moves when a lot of shorts just bailed out here and not all the shorts are trying to get out at the same time, which is what happened with GME. So long story short, I don't know if this is over. I'm not going to count this over. We're still, we're still in the upper part of the range here on this move. You want to count this move from 11 to 60. We're at 50. This ain't done just because it had a sell day, right? So um that's my spiel on amc i figured that was going to come up today um so got that out of the way and uh, yeah let's get started what did i miss more stock sales should be <laughs> the movie theater chain will ask shareholders to buy. <laughs> that's great i think that's amazing Pay for it before exactly, dude. Diamond news. Um, yeah, I mean, and I mean, the thing is, like, I, like I wanted a repeat of last Thursday, where I mean, the the Friday expiration was kind of in play, and we have another one of those. And um, like, I I was really, I'm really like, kind of bummed that like we we kind of pushed so strongly, meaning like we got longs involved already and some shorts out. So I really didn't want to see, like I, I would have preferred if it just kind of chilled up here, um, but these players are just, yeah, some of them, some, I mean, I mean, there's definitely algos behind these moves too. All righty, let's get started. So we're going to be talking about being ready um, today. And uh, this is kind of going to be like a hype rant webinar. Oh shit. God damn it. I told myself I was going to do it. So I actually don't have a rant today because this whole webinar is kind of going to be a rant. Oh, that's not nice. The entire webinar is kind of going to be a rant. Um, but anyway, we're going to be talking about, you know, just coming into the, uh, coming into the trading day, ready, preparing trades, um, acting like a boss, just being um, as confident as you need to be without being overconfident and trying to find that balance and that kind of jazz. Anyway, so let's get started. Market sentiment first, then we'll go over the, the, the trades of the week. Uh, just, or not the trades, but the stocks of the week. Maybe look for what were the best opportunities of the week, really good risk levels to play off of, why those risk levels held, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then we'll talk about being ready um, and Q&A webinar for the whole duration. Just ask your question. If I miss it, ask it again. And let's go. All right, so um, if you recall, let's pull the cues up. If you recall last week, um, we, you know, everything started to bounce and Cloud brought, and Cloud brought like that really nice um, uh, point about, was it May 11th, when all the stocks had a really strong green day. And you even saw it on the cues, right? This, I think it was this day. Oh, no, that day. Yeah, this super strong green day, which kind of showed, hey, there's support down here. And we saw that across the board on a whole lot of names. We kind of talked about that a little bit. Um, and that made me, that actually made me switch off, switch. That made me witch. That may, actually made me switch off my bearish set, bearish sentiment because I was getting a little bearish until we kind of, um, until we kind of bounced back again because I, I felt like there were, there might have been some fear if that kind of May 11th support failed. There could have been some definite fear and that was on the table. And, you know, I brought up how, to me, that's a bearish market. As long as fear is on the table, you're in a bear market because in a bull market, there's no fear. Um, and then when it starts to get the fear, that's when the bear market starts, right? And so 
Um, you know, I talk about recoveries off the bottom. It's always bullish, but basically what we needed to see is the after effects of that bounce, whether we hold, whether we come back. Uh, if we do come back, where's that higher low? Uh, is the downturn going to continue? Blah, blah, blah. So um, remember that these charts have a painful way up. Like, all, you know, all of the, all of the, the beta stocks, right? All these charts, like Tesla, all these charts that are, that, you know, were the market leaders that got destroyed, all, mostly tech stocks, have a really fucking, sorry, have a really just shit chart that they have to climb back up. So, I mean, just on a technical basis, you know, you have all this resistance looming that we have to get, that we have to chop through. And that's what made me think last week that when we had some, we had some churning to do, we had some proof, um, you know, putting, I don't want to say this. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.